How we doing, everybody? Happy Monday, and welcome to Wisconsin Sports On The Go with Trage. I'm your host, Trage. Today, we will be talking Packers. Packers have a game tonight against the Raiders. We're going to be previewing that, giving you all you need to know about the Packers leading up into this one. And then also talking a little bit about the Badgers. Got a win over this last weekend on Saturday. Homecoming game against Rutgers. We're going to be talking about that a little bit. And then we're also going to be looking at the Bucks' first preseason game. Got a win against the Bulls, so we're going to be looking at that game and just kind of dissect it a little bit and see what we liked and what to look for here leading forward for the Bucks. But with that, right away, we're jumping into the Packers. Got a game tonight against the Raiders, so we're going to have to talk about it here and give a full preview. Game is at 7.15 tonight on ABC. It is in Las Vegas, so the Raiders do have the home field advantage in this one as you would like to say. But you look at the matchup predictor, ESPN, they have the Packers as the 55% chance to win this ball game. And there's a lot of people who like the Packers in this one. This is a game the Packers need. 2-2 two and two leading up into this one. 1-1 one and one on the road so far this season. The Packers need this game more than anything, especially because you have a kind of a West Coast road trip here. You're going to be having the Raiders here on Monday night, and then you're going to be playing the Broncos, I do believe, next. Just to double check that quick, but I do believe it's the Broncos coming up next. Yep, they play the Broncos at the Broncos too, so they're going to be hanging out on the West Coast here a little bit. So this is a big start to that West Coast road trip for the Packers here. Leading into this one, the Raiders coming in here 1-3, and 0-1 at home so far this season. Jimmy Garoppolo injured a little bit. He got he was concussed. I do believe he is back for the game tonight. This this season so far for Garoppolo, he has been struggling a little bit, but that is due to pressure put on by the defenses here. So far on the season, he's sitting at 64 for 94, 68% completion rating, 709 yards so far, five touchdowns, six interceptions, four sacks taken. Jimmy Garoppolo struggles under pressure. Aiden O'Connell did fill in for him for that one game, 24 for 39, 238 yards for O'Connell. But I do expect to see Jimmy Garoppolo in this ball game. The Raiders have actually thrown a NFL high so far this season, seven interceptions, a lot resulting, like I said, from poor decisions due to pressure. Neither is a threat getting out of the pocket between Garoppolo and O'Connell in this one. So the Packers need to put on the pressure in this one. It's re- if you put the pressure on Jimmy, or if O'Connell gets in there for some reason, you have to be able to pressure those two guys, make it uncomfortable for them, and they will make mistakes in this ball game. First two games, Raiders offense looked great, but in the last two games, 11 sacks they have given up. Pressure on Jimmy has been the problem in these last couple games, and led to his concussion there, getting roughed up there in the pocket. So it's going to be key for the Packers defense to put some pressure on the Raiders in this one. Jair versus Devontae Adams. That's going to be a huge matchup on Monday night. Jair, one of the best corners when he's right in the National Football League, and Devontae Adams is still one of the best receivers out there. He hasn't been poised with having the greatest quarterback play over the last couple of years. Ever since he left Rodgers, and Rodgers, that was his favorite target, and him and Rodgers hooked up all the time. But now with Jimmy G, Adams still a threat. So far on the season, he's sitting at 33 receptions on 50 targets, 397 yards, three touchdowns, uh, as long as actually 32 on the season. So Devontae's still putting up decent numbers for the Raiders in this season. It's gonna. They say with Devontae, it's so hard to defend him because he reaches out late. His hands don't move until late in the uh, when the pass is coming. You don't know Devontae Adams is the target. If you're not looking for the ball, you're looking at Devontae, you don't know the ball is coming at him until last second. He's going to reach those hands out and he's going to snag it. So Jair is going to have a big matchup here. I do think that the Raiders are going to utilize this. They're going to move him around a lot and see what the Packers will do with it. I expect him to be lined up. He usually starts on the left side. I expect him to stay on the left side in this one. But the Raiders will utilize this to get other guys open, like Jacoby Myers and also Hunter Renfro, even a guy like Austin Hooper. They're going to utilize this matchup and try to work off of it and work towards other receivers in this one. 
So it's going to be key for other um, for other guys in this Packers secondary to come up big in this one. That's looking at Rasul Douglas in this game, Keyshawn Nixon, even your safeties with Rudy Ford and uh, Darnell Savage. Those guys are going to have to have some big games here for the Packers to really shut down the secondary receivers for the Raiders. It's going to be a huge game for your front seven for this Packers team to shut down Jimmy Garoppolo, put pressure on him, make him feel your presence there, and make him make mistakes. He will make mistake throws. You just have to put the pressure on him in this one. But I do expect the Raiders to target Devontae Adams in this one. I don't think they're going to shy away from it. I still think they're going to go to him in this one. I just think Jair is a great matchup for uh, Devontae Adams, and I do expect it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one to watch. That's for sure. that is for sure in this one. But with that looking, I just wanted to look at some of the stats. We covered Devontae Adams, we covered Jimmy Garoppolo, but I just want to look at a couple little more stats here for the Raiders and some game changers for the Raiders. A huge game changer for them is going to be Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, really good back from the Raiders. 62 carries on the year, 166 yards. He's been struggling to start this year, but that results in the struggle from the pressure that the Raiders are getting to start this year. Josh Jacobs, though, still a formidable back, and I do expect the Packers are going to have to shut him down in this game, not just in the run game, but also in the pass game. Also looking at another guy for the Raiders, and I'm looking at Max Crosby in this one, defensive end for the Raiders. 23 total tackles, 14 solo tackles. He has got four sacks on the year, 31 sack yards, and four tackles for loss. So it's going to be huge keeping a guy like Max Crosby out of the backfield in this one. Also, Marcus Peters, another guy for the Raiders, put up some big, some decent numbers so far on the season for the Raiders. 13 solo tackles, three assists, 16 total tackles on the season so far. Marcus Peters has been playing good for the Raiders ever since showing up this season. The Raiders, they're a, they're not a great team. The Packers should be able to take advantage of situations in this one. But what the Raiders do very well, and that is leaning towards the special teams. Special teams for the Raiders is actually really good and a key for them. Daniel Carlson has made 111 of his last 119 kicks. Anywhere from inside the 45, he's a, he's money. That's just plain and simple. He's going to knock it down for you. He has been great for the Raiders so far in his career. Uh, punter A.J. Cole is also one of the best punters in the league, averaging about 49 yards per kick last season. The special team unit is a unique bunch for the Raiders. In this one, if it gets tight, it's going to be about controlling the Raiders and keeping them out of field goal range because what we can see from this is Daniel Carlson is a really good uh, kicker and you're going to want to keep him out of field goal range in this one. Otherwise, you get into a field goal battle against them, their Carlson might beat our Carlson. That's all I know in this one. But I wanted to check out the Packers stats before I move on to the next topic here. The Packers coming into this one. Jordan Love, so far on this season, sitting at 74 for 132, 901 yards, eight touchdowns, three interceptions. He's been getting pressured lately. Look at the offense looks a little bit lost for the Packers, to be honest with you. And I'm going to cover that here. But the Packers' offense has looked lost. And Jordan Love has been susceptible to very slow starts on the season so far. And I think leading into this one, hopefully this is a boost game for Jordan Love leading into this one. I think it's going to rely on, is Aaron Jones going to be healthy? Is he going to be on a pitch count again? If Aaron Jones is on a pitch count, I don't understand why Aaron Jones is in the game. Why are we risking Aaron Jones anymore? I know the run game for the Packers has struggled this season. It mightily has struggled. But Aaron Jones needs to be out there more than anything right now. He is a cog in the engine. He makes this thing go. Even in the pass game, they people don't realize how much Aaron Jones is to this Packers team until he's gone. You look at the ability for them to work short little dump routes or any kind of run, and without Aaron Jones out there, we are seeing it full-fledged right now. 
There isn't that safety blanket for Jordan Love. There isn't that guy in the huddle to calm everything down right now. Jordan Love's out there with a bunch of rookies and a guy like A.J. Dillon, who's also struggling right now in his own head. And having a guy like Aaron Jones brings everything back to the table. He's a been there, done that back. And that is a huge loss so far for the Packers throughout these last couple games. Even in this last game against the Lions there for Aaron Jones, he wasn't really involved in the game. And that's where I think the Packers have failed is getting him out there and getting him in there. He has been hurt. If he was on a pitch count last week, okay. But if he's on a pitch count this week, do you play him? Do you waste that time? Just, you know, what if he gets hot? If he gets hot, are you going to keep him on that pitch count or are you going to let him roll? That's what I think a big question mark for the Packers in this one will be is that if Aaron Jones is a full goal or if he's, well, we can get him in there for about 15 snaps tonight, but we're going to see how it goes after that. I think Aaron Jones needs to be out there in this one. Packers need to utilize him and try and get the run game going. Try to play some complimentary football the best that they can to really open up windows for Jordan Love. You look at that Lions game, Jordan Love, they didn't ever blitz, but Jordan Love was pressured. The offensive line has to play better for this Packers team. The offensive line has been atrocious so far for this Packers team. It just, you know, you go through continuity and not having David Bakhtiari, then he's back, then he's gone again. Elton Jenkins, you never know what you're going to have with Elton Jenkins. Zach Tom was out for a little bit. You don't know who's going to be out there on the, this offensive front for the Packers. And that's where maybe having some, uh, having that continuity back, having guys out there consistently, maybe this offensive line progresses throughout the year and starts to figure it out together. But as of right now, a big struggle in the run game and the pass game, especially you look at that Lions game, is coming from the mental lapses and the struggle of this offensive line for the Packers. But with that, Jordan Love, like I said, 901 yards passing. A.J. Dillon's actually leading the team right now with 118 yards rushing so far this season. He's struggled. He has struggled. It seems like he's a step behind. He's not getting the wheels going. And A.J., it's a lot of trying to go side to side. Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones is your side-to-side mover. He's your side-to-side back. He's your shotgun back. I need to get, it's first and 10, and I want to get a big chunk play. Aaron Jones is the guy to go to in that situation. A.J. Dillon's more of a back that when I'm third and one, when I'm third and three, and I want to do, I want to play some kind of run matchup here, I'm going to give it to A.J. Dillon and let him go straight ahead. I'm not going to make him go side-to-side. Aaron Jones, or, uh, sorry about that. A.J. Dillon has been trying to go a lot more side to side, and that has been a lot of the failure in A.J. Dillon so far this year. He's not a side to side back. He's not a quick back. He's a downhill runner, and that's how they got to utilize him moving forward. Otherwise, we will continue to see this struggle. He's averaging 2.7 yards per carry, but that is because he's a bruiser of a back. He's a big back who needs to be put, you need to have under center. He needs to line up in the backfield, get a full head of steam, Coming forward, that line's got to get him a little bit of a gap, and he's going to get you that three yards, that big that big first down that you need on short yardage plays. Whereas on the flip side of that, Aaron Jones being out has really exposed A.J. Dillon for not being a dominant back, but Aaron Jones is that guy when you need a big chunk play out of the backfield. You're going to go to Aaron Jones. He's got the speed to get outside and make something happen, whereas A.J. Dillon does not have that speed. And we're seeing it full-fledged because we're trying to put him in positions where he is not great to be utilized in. And that's where I think the run game has struggled a little bit for the Packers here. I would like to see them involve maybe a back like Emmanuel Wilson a little bit more. He didn't have great numbers in those two games, five carries for 11 yards. But it's trial and error with young guys, and that's where I think maybe you give him a little bit of time here, and maybe he starts to blossom for you and develop into that second back behind Aaron Jones, who is a more athletic, speedy back, not an A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon's more of a bruiser back. When I need a a little chunk play on third and three, I'm going to go to A.J. Dillon. But if I need a, if I'm first and 10, I want to go the distance here. I'm going to give it to Aaron Jones and let him hit the numbers and get outside the numbers and go. And that's where maybe involving some of these other guys in the run game, but that's where play calling comes into it and really getting in depth with play calling and trying to work through these things is going to be huge for the Packers here. Uh, 
coming up. But with that, so far, receiving yards on the year, Romeo Dobbs leads the team in rece- uh, receiving yards. 224 yards on the season so far on 20 receptions, 33 targets for him. His longest 30, he's actually got three touchdowns on the year for the Packers. Tackles-wise, you're looking at linebacker Quay Walker. He's got 47 tackles on the year for him. Quay Walker's been playing a little bit better this year. A boneheaded mistake on that field goal there uh, late in that game against the Lions. Shouldn't have made the mistake. He owned up to it. He he knows. I, I deeply hope that he knows what he did wrong in that situation. And we can let bygones be bygones. We can move on. Quay Walker's a talented linebacker. Hopefully, the stupid mistakes, I guess you could say it it is, stupid mistakes. Hopefully, the stupid mistakes that Quay Walker has made early on in his career start to fade away, and we can see Quay Walker for what he really is. And he is a great linebacker when he's right and when he's got his head on straight. So hopefully, we see a lot better stuff out of Quay Walker here leading and going forward in the rest of the season here. But I want to look at the injury report for the Packers leading up into this one. For the Packers and the Raiders leading up into this ball game here. For the Packers, looks like Jair is still listed as questionable. Rudy Ford listed as questionable. Devondre Campbell's out for this one. Zane Anderson is out and Eric Stokes is still on the pup list right now. Devontae Adams listed as questionable but expected to play. Nate Hobbs, cornerback for the Raiders, is out. Jahorian Bennett is questionable, and Marcus Epps, safety for the Raiders, is also questionable. I want to just double check. See if the that list is actually, we're looking at, it looks like the offensive line will be intact for this one. Elton Jenkins, John Runyon, and Zach Tom did not receive game statuses and are all expected to play on Monday night for the Packers. Christian Watson, Luke Musgrave, and Keratin Valentine also are expected to play in this one. So big news there, Luke Musgrave out of the... (coughs) Sorry about that. Uh, Luke Musgrave out of the concussion protocol. So that is good news. Getting one of Jordan Love's top uh, targets back out onto the football field. Also, running back Aaron Jones, cornerback Jair, and Rudy Ford as questionable for Monday night's game against the Raiders. I do expect them to be out there, maybe limited in this one, but hopefully see them out on the football field. Also, cornerback Eric Stokes, who's currently physically unable to perform, is also questionable. Would need to be added to a 53-man roster to be able to play. So hopefully see Eric Stokes back out on the football field hit pretty soon. Doesn't It doesn't look like it will be against the Raiders on Monday night, but... Hopefully see him back there on the football field for the Packers soon. Would add a boost in the secondary for the Packers in this one. But with that, it looks like, for the most part, offensive line's intact. You're going to have, you're getting Carrington Valentine back. Musgrave is back for the Packers. And then also getting Christian Watson. Looks like he is ready to rock and roll. I would love to see Jair out there for this one. He did have limited practice on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's good news right there. Also with Rudy Ford, limited practice on Friday and Saturday. And looking for Aaron Jones here, he did have limited practice Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Good news there. They are practicing. They are back out on the practice field. Hope to see the Packers at almost full strength here on Monday night against the Raiders. But back to what I said, the Packers, they really need to put pressure on Garoppolo in this one. He's a different quarterback when the heat is turned up. The oven is cooking. Jimmy Garoppolo starts to crumble in there. The Raiders' run game is solid, and they can create a lot of long drives. They're going to eat minutes. They're going to try to eat minutes from the Packers. The Packers' offense can roll against this Raiders' defense, but they need the defense to force some three and outs in this one. They can't afford Jimmy Garoppolo, Josh Jacobs, and Devontae Adams to hang on to the ball for too long in this one. They're going to eat minutes away in this one. Like I said, Carlson is money when you get him with inside 45 yards. So in this one, to for the Packers, it's going to be about three and outs. We have to get the Raiders off the field, try to limit their possessions in this one, and limit the amount of time they hold on to the ball. 
putting pressure on the Raiders team and turning up turning them over will be huge key in this one for the Packers. Huge key for the defense. Rashawn Gary, uh, Devontae Wyatt getting in there, Kenny Clark, Quay Walker. You got to put pressure on Jimmy G in this one. Slow down the run game for the Raiders. Put pressure on Jimmy G in that pass game, and the Packers will be A-OK. The Packers offense has been struggling as of late, though. Lack of the run game and early down struggles through the uh, really just str- the early down struggles for the Packers here have been killing them all season long here. Uh, for the team as a whole, ranking 29th in yards per carry, the run game uh, pretty much has turned into nothing short of awful this season. Looking at the game against the Lions, they did they dared the Packers in that one to throw the ball a lot. You look at the defensive packages they threw up in that one, cover one for most of it. They wanted the Packers to throw the football. The Packers struggled in that aspect. The Packers tried to throw it a lot, but they couldn't give what the Lions were trying to uh, give them in that one. They couldn't take what the they couldn't take what the Lions were trying to give. The Lions were trying to give the Packers yards through the pass game. They dared the Packers to throw the football, and the Packers couldn't do it. They could not handle when the heat was turned out from Aiden Hutchinson. They they didn't blitz basically all game there, and yet Jordan Love was under distress, and receivers couldn't get open. He couldn't hit the open receiver. It was just a struggle of a game. They did the right thing in that one going away from the run, but complimentary football is going to be key for the Packers to get the backs involved, not just on the ground, but in the pass game too. In that one, Having Aaron Jones back, you could have went to a little bit of play action maybe. You could have tried to create new looks for this Lions defense. And that's why I think leading this one, you're going to have to create new looks for the Raiders here. The teams are going to be watching what these other teams have done to you. They're going to look at what the Lions did to you, how they shut your offense down for most of that game. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to copy what they did in that one and try to uh, utilize that in our favor. And that's where the Packers need to play a little bit more complimentary football. Try to get all the backs involved. Try to get receivers involved when you can. But really work all aspects of the offense. Open up the playbook in this one. The run game hasn't been good and it uh, affects them consistently on first down. And that's where the struggle is so far this season. They get themselves into a lot of third and longs. Second and long, third and long. Set yourself up for struggles all the way through. And a lot of it has to do with there's a lot of pre-snap penalties that have been going on this year for the Packers. That needs to be uh, extinguished now for this Packers team moving forward if they're going to have success there because you're not even going to snap off and struggles are happening. Then you get the snap off and the struggle is still there. You're setting yourself up in bad situations for a team that struggles running the football right now. You're setting yourself up in a bad spot when you start first and 10, ends up as first and 15. Now we have more yards we got to get. We're not a great first down team. Now we're working with second and long, third and long. Now we're putting a lot on Jordan Love's uh, plate to try to gain that 15 yards when in all reality it should be a third and three. We should be moving the ball right uh, right along there. And that's where I think the Packers need to really look at heading into this ball game against the Raiders. But like I said, game 7-15 start tonight on ABC. Monday Night Football is going to be a big matchup for the Packers. The Packers really need this one. It's going to be about 91 degrees at game time in this one. So it's going to be a hot one uh, for the Packers here. But switching gears out of the Packers, leading into the Badgers. The Badgers got a big homecoming win. 24-13 24 to 13 against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And when I say big, it was good to see the Badgers get a win. They struggled though. They struggled against a Rutgers team that has struggled mightily over the years. They've been Rutgers has they're four and two. They've played a struggling schedule this year. Not a very high end schedule. And the Badgers struggled to get stuff going against them. If not for a, a Ricardo Hallman pick six there in that second quarter, there's a good chance Rutgers scores because it was night. I think it was 95 yard pick six. Yep, 95 yard pick six. Rutgers was in the red zone. They score there, touchdown. It's 10 to seven heading into the half. Instead, 17 to nothing. 
that was a big moment in this ball game. A big it was the it was the defining moment in this ball game because you look the rest of the way. Badgers put up three in the first quarter, fourteen in the second, thanks to uh, Hallman's pick six. In that third, nothing for the Badgers, and then they put up seven in the fourth there to finally ice this game away. The Badgers did not look very good in this one. The defense saved the Badgers in this one. The secondary played a little bit better in this ball game. Mordecai played an okay game. Braylon Allen played a pretty good game. Had a fumble, but made up for it. Touchdown there for Braylon Allen. But another game where the Packers... Are, see, I get the Packers in my head, and then I can't roll the Badgers. The Badgers just struggled through and through on both sides of the football. If we look at stats for this one, we're just going to cover the stats real quick. In this one, for Rutgers, we'll look at Rutgers first. Gavin Wimsat, starting uh, quarterback for Rutgers, 16 for 35, 181 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Evan Simon, Simon, two for three, came in for Wimsat late, two for three, 30 yards, one touchdown. Touchdown to the backup quarterback. Are you kidding me? Rutgers rushing on the game. Wimsat actually led the team in rushing. Nine carries for 43 yards. Uh, Kyle McConey was eight carries for 16 yards in this one. And Jashan Benjamin went four carries for 13 yards. As a team, the team in total, negative eight yards rushing. As a total overall, though, the Rutgers did rush for 64 yards on the ball game. Looking at receiving yards, that's where it gets a little alarming for me. And it's not a lot, but my worry is, is that Rutgers is not a very huge football team. They're not a as talented as some of the other Big Ten teams you're going to face football team. And that's what worries me with the, pack, or the Badgers in this one. Isaiah Washington, three catches for 53 yards. Ja'Kay Jackson had 46 yards, and Ian Strong had 45 yards. For a team, 211 yards on the game receiving for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They had a couple of fumble recoveries in this one. Two fumble recoveries, actually, in this ballgame. So that was a... They won the turnover battle from the Badgers in this one. Two recoveries for Rutgers in this one. The fumbles came from Hayden Rucci and Braylon Allen there. Braylon Allen was a killer because it was in the red zone on, I believe, the four-yard line for the Rutgers Starlet Knights. Other than that, that's about it for Rutgers. Looking at Wisconsin here, Tanner Mordecai, 17 for 31, 145 yards, one touchdown. Just not huge numbers out of Tanner Mordecai in this one. You expected him in a game like this to be able to pick apart a Rutgers secondary, and he just he didn't pick them apart. He didn't have any explosive plays. Just your average day at the ballpark, I guess. Just an average play at quarterback in this one. Braylon Allen did get over 100 yards once again. Uh, 101 yards on the game for him. Looking at this one, he actually, it's his 18th career 100 uh, yard rushing performance, more than any other Power Five running back in the country. Posted his 15th career 100 plus yard one touchdown game. That's more than any active Power 5 player. In each of the last 19 wins dating back to early 2021, Allen has rushed for 80-plus yards. Allen has gone for over 100 yards rushing in 16 of those 19 wins. So you want to know how to win if you're the Wisconsin Badgers? Get Braylon Allen going, and you will win these ballgames. It was another case where we didn't see Braylon Allen really get going until that second quarter. Had the fumble, made up for it with the touchdown, but that's where the Badgers will make their money the rest of the year is getting Braylon Allen involved and really work in this offense. I thought in this one, Jackson Aker, 13 carries for 65 yards. I thought he played a great... I think the Badgers found their number two running back behind uh, Braylon Allen now that Ches Malusi's out uh, for the rest of this year. Jackson Aker played a pretty good game, and I think he solidified himself a spot there uh, behind Braylon Allen here moving forward. Also another rushing stats, Tanner Mordecai, 11 carries for 50 yards. Badgers, 213 yards on the ground in this one. 
Looking at the receiving wise, Will Pauling, eight catches for 68 yards in this one. Bryson Green, 35 yards. Jackson Aker, 14 yards through the air. Braylon Allen, 14 yards. Hayden Rucci, 11 yards through the air. And Tucker Ashcraft, three yards through the air, but caught the one touchdown pass from Tanner Mordecai in this one. 145 yards through the air for the Badgers in this one. It was a little bit better looking at complimentary football-wise in this one. I did expect the receive the uh, Badgers pass game to get a little bit more in this ball game. I thought they could really expose Rutgers secondary in this game, but you take your wins with your loss in this one. We got the run game going. That was good to see. Hopefully the pass game comes along with it. If you can start getting these numbers a little bit closer, start playing a lot of complimentary football, getting Braylon Allen involved, but also still working with the receivers here. I think this Badgers team can take a next step with this offense. I don't think it's a complete flush of this season. I think the uh, the Badgers still have a good shot in this season, but they have to put a lot of pieces together and work their way forward throughout the, the rest of this one. But we're going to jump into a little bit more Badgers tomorrow here. We talked a lot about the Packers. We're going to talk a little bit more Badgers tomorrow, just dissect this game down a little bit more, also recap in the Packers, but we're going to talk a lot more Badgers tomorrow night. With that, though, I'm going to jump over into the Bucks real quick. I just want to look at the Bucks' first preseason game here against the Bulls. Pull it up here. 105 to 102, they won this game against the Bulls. It was a tight one. Uh, good game. Bulls played a pretty good matchup in this one. Patrick Williams for the Bulls went for 13 points. Colby White for the Bulls put up 14 in this one. Levine, DeRozan, and Vucevic actually played for the Bulls in this game. Levine scored 9, DeRozan 7, and Vucevic put up 4 for the Bulls in this one. The Bucks, Giannis did not play. Livingston did not play. Middleton and Lillard did not play. And neither did Cameron Payne in this ballgame. Jay Crowder did start for the Bucks in this one. 10 points from Crowder, 4 for 7, uh, 2 for 4 from the three-point line in this one. Did have four rebounds on the ball game. Two turnovers. Not bad from Jay Crowder. Bobby Portis, eight points in this ball game. Four for five from the floor. He had four rebounds in this one. Two assists on the ball game. Brooke Lopez, 11 points on the game. Four for eight from the floor. He was three for five from downtown. Splash Mount is still rolling for the Milwaukee Bucks. Michael Beasley did start for the Bucs in this one. Played 22 minutes, actually. 5 for 10 from the floor. 3 for 7 from downtown. 4 assists on the ball game. 2 steals for Beasley. Did have 2 fouls in this one, but 13 points. Wigginton, he uh, played 25 minutes for the Bucs. 1 for 7 from the floor. 0 for 4 from downtown. Did have 3 rebounds and 3 assists. 3 steals, but did have 4 turnovers in this ball game. Drew Timmy saw limited action. 4 minutes. One for two from the floor. He had two points in this one. Gotta love the stash and Drew Timmy. Hopefully, I didn't. I didn't get to watch a lot of the game. Didn't get to see Drew Timmy get uh, get in there. Hopefully, he is rocking the headband there for the Bucks. Beach Camp did come off the Bucks or the bench for the Bucks in this one. Played twenty eight minutes though. Five for eleven from the floor. One for three from downtown. Seven for eight from the line in this ball game. He had eight or nine rebounds in total. Three assists. Three turnovers, but did have 18 points. Led all scorers in this ball game. So good to see from Beach Camp. Starting to turn a corner there in his pro career. Thanos Antetokounmpo, he played 21 minutes. Six for eight from the floor. Two for two from the line. He scored 14 points for the Bucs in this one. Robin Lopez coming off the bench. 19 minutes played. Three for six from the floor. 0 for one from downtown. He had six points for the Bucs in this one. Pat Connington, 20 minutes played. Three for eight from the floor. One for four from downtown, one for two from the line. He had eight rebounds in total and eight points. Andre Jackson did have a huge dunk for the Bucks on a breakaway in this one. He had four points in total, 17 minutes, two for five from the floor, 0 for one from downtown. And Washington, 23 minutes played, two for seven from the floor. He was 0 for four from downtown, two for two from the line. He had six points in total here in this one. The Bucks from the three-point line in this ballgame, 10 for 33, 30%. From the floor, 48%, 41 for 48. A little bit better from the line there, 13 for 16, 81, uh, 
from the line in this one. The Bulls actually shot 91% from the line in this ball game, 39% from the floor, and 37% from downtown. It was a good start for the Bucks here to start their preseason. Looking at the schedule here, they will have they will have the Memphis Grizzlies coming up next here. That looks like it's going to be tomorrow night. Ah, uh, tomorrow night there against the Grizzlies. It will be. It looks like it's going to be on. I think it'll be on Bally again, I do believe. I don't see the TV schedule for this one, but they did host the other one on Bally, so I would expect to see them on Bally again. Looking at it, it looks like Giannis is going to be a game-time decision along with Payne, Middleton, A.J. Green, and Chris Livingston in this one will all be game-time decisions. Marcus Smart will also be a game-time decision for the Memphis Grizzlies. But with that, that is about all I have for Wisconsin sports for the day. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more Badgers tomorrow here. We're going to be talking. We'll preview the Bucks grizzlies game, see what we're feeling. We're also going to recap the Packers' Monday night game against the Raiders. But if you're not going to be in Las Vegas, get out. Go down to your favorite spot. Watch the Packers here on Monday. Night, or kick back on the couch and watch the Packers here against the Raiders. Hopefully get a big win here on Monday Night Football. But with that, this has been Wisconsin Sports on the go with Trage. Thank you guys for listening. Deuces.